Hey, what's up guys, you're watching Max's View. And today, we're gonna go over the techniques and safety protocols of photographing venomous snakes, that way you can take photos like these. Now I know what you might be initially thinking, why don't you just take the lens and zoom in? Well, what if you have a prime lens and you can't zoom in because you want that really shallow depth of field, or you wanna take a macro shot like these? So we're going to go over everything from out in the field and hiking to in a studio and a less dynamic situation. Now I'm filming on my Sony, so I'll be taking the photographs actually on my Nikon D5500. And I know, full frame is better. You get a larger sensor and you get more megapixels. They are amazing. But this video is about technique and safety. So I wanna show even the hobbyist or those just getting started that you can start taking really awesome pictures even if you have a camera with the CMOS sensor. These are fantastic cameras and we are miles ahead of where we used to be with these things. Out in the field you can get wonderful photographs with just a camera and a lens, but let me show you some of the other pieces of gear that I bring with me that will just take things over the top. The first piece of gear I've got here is going to be this Nikon 50mm 1.8 prime lens. Now this is wonderful if you're going to be shooting in low light or want that really shallow depth of field. Now with animals you might not want too shallow of a depth of field, but we'll get into that here in a bit. The next thing I have is going to be this Nikon off-camera flash. This one's the SB800. This is an off-camera sync cord. That way you can just plug it into your Nikon hot shoe. And that way the flash isn't actually on top of your camera and you can move it off and get a couple different possibilities. Finally, I've got this diffuser for my flash. It really makes the light a lot softer and a lot more pleasing. When you're running and gunning, you don't have a whole rig with you, but that little setup there, it can change so much so quickly. And then when you're in a studio session, that flash becomes a lot more helpful. I will actually have mine mounted up on a light stand and then I'll have the big soft box, which I'm using right now with my video light to kick the flash and make a bigger light source. And then I'll have a sandbag down at the bottom. This one's empty right now, but the last thing you want when you're working with venomous animals is for your light stand to tip over. That's some of the gear you can utilize, but let's go out and I'll show you how to use it. All right, so it's a big echoey room because it's empty and we're alone. But right now, my setup is going to be this white background and I've got a black tablecloth and I've got a white tablecloth. And then the lens I'm gonna be using today is going to be a 100 millimeter macro lens. This is a really nice lens and it allows you to get very close up shots. But of course, you don't want your hands getting too close to the snake. With a macro lens, you do want those tied up shots. So my secret with that is gonna be this little remote shutter here. I got this offline, it's got used, it cost me about six bucks. And that allows me to remotely control my camera away from the snake and safe. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up this big light box and we're gonna be able to illuminate this area quite nicely. All right, so we have our setup here. I've got the Nikon and the macro lens on a tripod. I've got my flash here. We're going to be using this under slave mode to where this is going to pick up the flash off the camera, which I'm going to have bouncing back into this to illuminate the snake. I've got a reflector here that we can toy around with to fill in the gaps, but we're not gonna use it at first. We're just gonna toy around. We're gonna get our settings set up and then I'll be using a remote with the venomous. But first we're gonna take a non-venomous snake and make sure our shots and our flash and everything is accurate. That way when we have a hot snake out, we're not having to mess with things. I've got my animal control person here, Hayden. She's gonna be looking after the animal because I'm going to be focusing on the photography aspect. I've got my flash, the reflector, the camera, the lens, everything going on. So I'm not going to have the proper attention for a venomous animal that I'll need. So she's going to be working with this amazing hook, once again from Toby from Snake Charmer Hooks. Amazing hooks, I can't brag enough about these. These are amazing. So she's going to be using this, focusing on the animal control while I focus on the photography and my safety aspects. <clears throat> so what I really like about Gaboon Vipers is they're very chill. Like, they don't move until they do. So they're great for taking photos of because he's just going to hang out there. I'm far enough away because I've got my camera between me and him. But I can still get really close and I don't have to focus on focusing because I've got this little remote shutter here. So I'm gonna pull the camera away. I'm gonna set this to my quick response remote, which is this tiny thing here. $6 and it could quite literally be a lifesaver in this situation. So I point it in his general direction. I check the focus. 
Now we're a little bit off, so we can pull it down here. So with this 100 millimeter macro lens, you have a minimum focusing distance, which is why macro lenses are so great. It's because that focusing distance is going to be a lot smaller. You can get a lot closer to your subject. This macro lens, of course, has a one-to-one -one ratio, which means it fills up your sensor. It's quite amazing. So I'm going to point it at him, and I can just use my foot to kind of scoot it over, and I can get really close. And if you spin around here, you can see a blurred out image of his face. Now we're gonna see how close we can get. Point it right at him. Press my button. I'm gonna scoot this back. So I'll, I have this handle here, which is the farthest point away, and it's in between me and the snake. So I can get this real low, and I can get it right up in his face. And the whole time I'm staying out of his striking distance. All right. So, so as you see with this guy, he's a little more testy. He's already ready to go. So I'm definitely going to use the remote on this guy. Where's my remote? So right now I'm at F11 with ISO at 800, my shutter speed at 80. And we're going to get really close to him. Put it right on his face. Use your remote. Now that everything's set up, I can just hit this. And I've got this really dramatic split lighting that you see. So if I want to change it up just a little bit, I can take this light, swing it around here. We can hit the 45s. Same as if you're doing portraits. You've got 45 degrees from the chin up into the side. It's still focused on him. So I'll bring it down just a little bit, frame up my shot how I like it, hit my remote. And we've got a really nice, super up close photo. Oh my God, he just opened his mouth. That is dope. So, so now he's got some tongue flick going on. He's got some activity and you can really get some nice shots. Every time this flash goes off and he sees this, he opens his mouth just a little bit. So watch this, hit this. Every time that flash goes off, he opens his mouth and you get these amazing looking shots. So we're gonna do it once more as to not stress him out and then we're gonna move on. So now we got some amazing shots of this rock rattlesnake. It looks awesome. Really something to really show off and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the cobra. This one's gonna be the most interesting of all. Now that the cobra is calmed down and is staying still for just a minute, I'm just going to go ahead and fire away. I've got all my settings dialed in, and the cobra is just going to let me take these photos and doesn't have a worry in the world. So we're focused on the animal. We're getting these shots. I can get my different angles. Awesome lighting. And anytime I want to change a setting, I just pull the camera away a little bit to where it's out of range. The cool thing about cobras is how they strike. Because of the way their ribs are, they, they have to spread them out and strike downward. So you can, you can really predict some of the different things as far as where the cobra is going to go, if, how it's going to strike. So I'm getting these great hooded up shots, but I'm going to scoot back a little more out of range. Here we go. Yeah. Oh my God. That was beautiful. Okay. That was a good shot. So I've got everything going on right. I've got giblet in focus, and I just need to frame up my shot and then fire away. Now, this is amazing photos of this Cobra, and if I just want to tweak a couple things, I can move the light more to the front, fill in more of the face. Or if I want to make things a little more dramatic, bring it more to the back. Just hit that remote. 
So with it being her time to go up, her eyes are on me. So a cool thing about this cobra is this is actually known as the white claw cobra. If you Google white claw cobra, you're gonna see this snake curled around some white claw. Those photos were taken by Brandon Ricks, another amazing photographer. And this snake is just clearly full of personality and loves its photo shoots. So if you wanna find out more about this snake, this is a pastel monocled cobra owned by Atlas Herps. Its name is Giblet and, it's, and she's wonderful. She's great to work with. And she let me take some fantastic photos. She's got so much personality. So here we have an African variable bush viper. Squams as most people know him, Squamatus. Uh, this guy is an amazing snake to take macro photographs of. Just for the fact that he's got these really fine dragon-like keeled scales. And so there's so much you can do with them. And really getting up there and getting that detail, that's so important. He looks amazing. And as you can see, he's really chilled out. When he's on this hook, he feels happy as can be. Yeah, he knows I'm there, and I definitely still keep my distance. But with this guy, he is a great demonstrator of just how relaxed these snakes can be during photo shoots. It's definitely very important to make sure you do your safety protocols and make sure that you do everything correctly. But it's so much fun. These snakes are so exciting. And this guy's posing for snake charmer hooks. But I'm going to get this guy put up, and we're going to go ahead and go back to the show and then get ready to take off. All right, so behind me, I've got a rattlesnake I've relocated off of someone's porch this morning, and I'm gonna simulate what it takes to film these snakes out in the wilderness. If you're out hiking, if you're out searching for them, then what do you need to do? So the couple things I'll do is I'll have my camera on a strap, so that way as I'm hiking and just hanging out, I don't have to worry about it, I can be hands-free. Another thing is if it's not dusty or blowing dust out, then I'll go ahead and leave my lens cap on and I'll have my lens hood on. This protects my lens and I don't have to worry about it, and yet I can go, come up quick and get a shot if I see something fast moving, say a deer or something like that. But in the case of reptiles, you have a lot more control because they're a lot slower moving. If I'm out hiking, I'll always have a hook with me. This one's from Snake Charmer Hooks. Again, amazing hooks, I love it. This one actually has a pointy end. Encourage things to stay away from you. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop them out and I'm gonna show you some of the techniques I use for photographing venomous snakes in the wild. So this one here is a Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. This is an iconic image of Texas just because they're pretty common here, um, but they're still amazing to photograph. So he's being pretty calm right now so I can demonstrate a couple things. Because I've got a prime lens on, I can really open it up to 1.8 and I can drop my ISO to 100. Because we have this daylight here, the sun, it can get bright, you're going to be overexposed. Well, you can just adjust your shutter speed because it's not like he's moving anyway. But I'm gonna swap it over to live view and I'll show you that with this 1.8 aperture, you might not capture the whole snake in focus. But I'll go ahead and stop up. I'll go to F4 so I make sure I get all of him in focus and then I'll adjust my shutter speed to compensate. So a key thing that's going to help your image stand out above other images is going to be angle. Unless you have a particular purpose in mind, shooting at this angle, a lot of the times you're going to get a snapshot style photo. But if you're down low and close to the ground, so even with the kit lens, if you're using a typical kit lens with a more stop down aperture, as long as your background is far away, you can still get some really nice bokeh like this photo in your images but I've got this prime lens which gives me a little bit of flexibility so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to create layers all right so I've got the snake now reared up at me because he's mad at me if you come across a snake in the wild this is typically something you'll see so I'm gonna have my background the snake but I want a nice foreground so for this foreground I'm just gonna add a little bit of foliage to make it look like we're looking through a tree at this snake and you get some awesome images, and you really create that depth. For this, it's pretty wide open here, and it's not likely you'll find a snake in a scenario like this. Normally, you're gonna have more foliage to work with, and you're gonna have better backgrounds, and if they're up on a rock slant, you can really get that nice bokeh. But it's supposed to cool down here today, and this guy's been more than amazing to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and get him put up and ready to relocate, but this is some of the field techniques that you can use to capture some awesome images. 
All right, guys, so I kind of flew through the outside section just a little bit, but that's because it's winter in Texas, and yeah, sometimes it does get cold. So I wanted to make sure I got the snake relocated before it did get cold today. But the possibilities with the prime lens are amazing. You can shoot in lower light, and since a lot of these snakes are crepuscular and coming out at dawn and dusk, then this really helps. And another thing is you can really control it and get that really nice bokeh. Now for a snake, I actually usually don't stop all the way down to 1.8 just because I think the depth of field is too shallow and I want to get more of the body of the snake. So you can really mess around in that 2.8 range or if you do want that shallow depth of field, it does give you that possibility. But guys, even if you don't have a prime lens and you just have a kit lens, you can still shoot well into the night. I've known photographers who take a mini tripod out and they drop their shutter speed to let in more light. Now here's a thought. What if you mixed a prime lens with the tripod and you did astro portraits? It's possible, the snakes don't move. Okay, well, they do move, but you can catch them not moving and you can still take astro portraits with them. I'm sticking by it. But guys, that's gonna be it for me. Do me a favor, tag me in your Instagram photos and let me know the techniques you use, whether in a studio or outside, to photograph venomous snakes or snakes in general. Also, if you like this video, Hit that like, subscribe, bell notification, all that jazz. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. But that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys next time.